everybody and welcome to the video. Today we're going to be talking about management groups and helping you understand the finer details of what management group entails. Management groups are an Azure resource construct. It's a hierarchy uh, object to help you set permissions and other things. Uh, and if we look at our diagram over here, one of the things that we notice is that we, we have some VMs in here and we have some Azure files that we're gonna stand up and we have an Azure firewall, app gateway, a VPN gateway, etc. cetera. Um, so we need to create Azure resources. But before we create Azure resources, we really need to understand uh, subscriptions and management groups and how we create resource groups, etc. So we switch over here to our Azure portal up here in the top of the search bar. Uh, you can type in management groups or whatever, however you get to the management group blade. And I'm going to show you kind of a, a general concept that I think is pretty scalable and copyable between a lot of different companies. So you're always going to have your tenant root group. And these management groups are going to be where you apply permissions. So in a previous video, we talked about privilege identity management. And in that video, I actually go and set permissions on Azure resource uh, management groups. So management groups are a way for you to logically combine subscriptions. We started off with subscriptions and subscriptions are great. You can grant permissions. You can say somebody can do X, Y, Z on all the resources inside of a subscription. The bad thing is, is that subscriptions are also tied to billing units. Um, and when you start getting the conversations about who's going to pay for what, it can get pretty tricky. And what it ends up doing is splintering and creating a bunch of different subscriptions that go to other people's cost centers or the, you know, other people's credit cards, bills, or whatever. Um, but we need permissions to be consistent. So if, if we're going to splinter off the subscriptions because they're associated with credit cards, how do we do permissions? And that's why they create a management group. So management groups is a way for us to logically bundle in a bunch of different subscriptions under a single object and we can apply permissions to the management group and all of the subscriptions underneath of it will inherit it. So what's the best way to structure our management groups? So you're always going to have the tenant root group. Uh, and I suggest creating like a global group so you can start creating tiers in your hierarchy. Um, so what I do is I splinter off from global and I go to production and I go to testing. So if we look at our testing environment, uh, this is where my DevOps subscription is. This is where it's like my playground. Generally, people will have a lot more permissions in a development testing group so that they can just tinker and play around and figure stuff out. Um, so then the next one that we have is our production uh, system. And I, I like to split out the production systems with enterprise shared services versus things that are company specific. So if you're in an enterprise, you know, cybersecurity is an enterprise shared service. Um, networking is an enterprise shared service. It doesn't matter how many companies you buy. It doesn't matter how many, you know, sub brands you have. Um, those go for everybody. Everybody needs them. It's a service that everybody uses. So we're going to create the enterprise shared services. And if we look in there, we have our cybersecurity and our network hub subscriptions and that. Uh, but then you might have company specific things. Uh, websites, you know, maybe this company is doing one thing, but that doesn't necessarily go for the entire company. So we have our company management group, and underneath of that, I put a management group for each of the individual business entities. So in my case, I, um, I used to own, still own a company called Connolly Ventures. I also own Imperion, and we've shifted over all of our branding and everything to Imperion. Um, but I might still have a business need to keep Connolly Ventures, maybe legal retention, storage, whatever the case may be. Um, and I need a place to put those, and those need to get billed to that business entity. Um, but I also need to be able to provide permissions, right? So in here under Imperion, I've got an Imperion uh, subscription for all of that stuff. So what I'm going to do with Imperion is I'm going to put a file server in the Imperion subscription. I'm going to put all of my global network hub stuff in uh, a network hub subscription. And then my domain controller is going to go in the cybersecurity subscription because identity is really a cybersecurity function at the core of it. So yeah, so then what you have is a permission structure. So let's, let's imagine that we're in a, a big company and we have dedicated IT teams. So we've got a dedicated cybersecurity team. Uh, we've got a dedicated networking team. We've got a dedicated uh, virtualization team. We've got a dedicated uh, database teams. All of those teams 
are an enterprise shared resource, right? So like if, if you have a dedicated database team, it doesn't matter where the databases are. Those database administrators need permissions to them. So what we can do is go up here to the global management group um, and we can actually apply various levels of permissions. So if we go into our access control, just as an example, we'll add role assignments. And you're gonna make various role assignments for these. All right, so once our uh, roles pull up, you know, for a database team, for instance, we're gonna need SQL permissions. Uh, maybe those guys need to administer MySQL and SQL. So maybe they're, we give them SQL Server contributor. That way they can do all the stuff with the SQL servers, they can manage all the databases. Might also need to give them some MySQL contributor roles. But then their contributor level access is only on SQL resources, right? And when we go back to our management groups, we're gonna apply the scope of those permissions to the global level. So it doesn't, because it's at the global level, it doesn't matter whether it's in the dev testing subscription, it doesn't matter whether it's in the Imperion subscription, it could be in the cybersecurity or network hub subscription. If a database gets created somewhere, your database administrators have access to it. So the IT teams, the cybersecurity teams, those enterprise level teams are generally going to apply permissions at the global tier just to make sure that they can do their job, right? You wanna be least privileged, but those guys need those privileges to do their job. But then like, let's, you know, an AI thing. So there's a new chat bot that, you know, so-and-so executive at Imperion company or Connolly Ventures company, they wanna create a web app uh, that's AI based and they want it to access, you know, their company data. It may not necessarily be an enterprise, you know, service. So we're gonna stick that in the Imperion subscription. And then, you know, that business unit those contractors, those guests, those teams of developers, whoever it is that's responsible for that specific application, we can then give them those permissions, probably at the resource group level, if I had to guess. Um, but maybe, maybe they are, uh, you know, a business unit of website developers, but their business unit is specific to Imperion. They don't work on anything Connolly Ventures. I could give them permissions at the management group level for Imperion. That way, if you know we create two, three, four subscriptions, they still have the permissions, but they would not have permissions on anything in the enterprise cybersecurity section or anything in the Connolly Ventures section, right? So management groups give us a way to logically create this permission structure at the top. And then we can also deploy Defender and other services, you know, based on these management groups as well. So just a high level overview. I know we talked about privilege identity management. We didn't go into too much detail about management groups, but we're gonna be creating ARC resources and we're gonna be creating you know, virtual machines in Azure. We're gonna be creating a network in Azure. So I wanted to kind of get uh, you, you know, some details out there about management groups and how we're gonna utilize management groups so that you can kind of understand the hierarchy. This is the permission and identity hierarchy. Um, the next thing that we're gonna talk about after this, after we get ARC and a couple other things done, is we're gonna start talking about the network hierarchy. How do we want the network traffic to flow into Azure? And that is completely separate from the billing hierarchy or the identity and permission hierarchy that you see with management groups. So we need to kind of be able to look at it through a few different lenses. So I hope that's been informative for you and I look forward to catching you in the next video.